Today, I want to tell you how one overlooked tool can transform the way you work with data. It's not a complex formula or a hidden setting. It's something so fundamental that you'll be shocked and that you haven't been using it all along. So, I'm talking about tables. Before you say, I know all about tables, because I might just show you something you didn't know. So, let's begin. To create a table, press Ctrl plus A to select your data, or if it's in a contiguous range, any cell in the range will do. And then on the Insert tab, click the Table button. Or you can use the keyboard shortcut, Ctrl plus T. And in the dialog box here, if your table doesn't have column headers, you can uncheck the box here. Mine does, so I leave it as is and click OK. And instantly Excel formats your data and adds filter buttons to each column header. But that's not all. Let's step through the features. Now, with the cell in the table selector, we have the contextual table design tab on the ribbon. And if you look to the left, you can see the table has been given the name table one. And I can click in here and rename the table something more useful, like sales data, and then press enter, and you'll see why this is important shortly. Now the most noticeable feature is the band of code formatting, allowing your eye to easily scan across the columns while maintaining the row you want to focus on. And this might seem insignificant, but it's not only a great time saver, it's also helpful in reducing errors in editing and entering data. If you don't have wide tables or you need formatting that's more subtle, you can choose from the styles in Style Gallery. And if you want to get rid of the formatting, go for the light style, which is basically none. Alternatively, you can create your own custom style by clicking on the Table Style button. I'm going to leave it with this formatting. I quite like the band of toes. Now, when working with large tables, you might often resort to going to the View tab and freezing the top row so that as you scroll down, your column labels stay fixed in place. But with tables, you don't need to do that. Simply scrolling down, you'll notice the column labels now replace the column letters, and my table doesn't even have to be in the very first row. It will pick up those column labels as soon as they scroll on screen. And that is super handy. Now the filter buttons added to each column header are time savers too. With just one click, you've got access to sorting tools and filtering, making it simple to narrow down your data to the most relevant information without manually searching through rows and columns. Now you've got different filter options depending on the type of data. Here we've got dates, and we can even search for specific data, narrowing down the list. For example, we've got type in J here, we get put marks with J in the name and I can just select them from here to apply filters. Alternatively, if you look at the text-based column, you'll see we've got text filters. And numeric columns, we've got a number of filters. Adding calculated columns is one of the most common parts to perform when working with data. For example, here we've got columns for sales and list of goods sold, but I don't have a column for gross profit, so let's perform unworking with data. Let's make it a bit wider. Notice that the table has automatically expanded to include this new column. Now the formula is sales minus the cost of goods sold. And as I reference those cells notice, instead of regular cell references, it uses the table structured references, which consists of the column name prefixed by the at symbol and the symbol tells Excel to refer to the cell on the current row. Now when I press enter, the formula has clicked down the remaining cells in the table, and as I arrow down the cells in the column, notice in the formula bar that the formula is identical in every cell. Yet the result is relative to the row the formula is on. Not only is having the same formula in a column best practice, it makes it easy to understand what the formula is calculating because the structured references simply display the column names. We can also reference tables in formulas from outside the table. For example, let's say we've got some outline figures for the total sales. Here I can enter a sum formula and I can reference the sales column. Notice as I hover my levels in the column header, it changes to a down arrow. One left click and I've selected the sales column. Notice in the formula, it's using the table structure reference again. This time it's fully qualified the table with the table name sales data, and this is why giving the table a name that's useful is super handy. And then we have the column name in square brackets. All I need to do is close parenthesis and sum and press enter and there's my formula. Now we can also write formulas or reference tables. Let's calculate the total profit. Here equals sum. 
Remember our table name is sales data. As I start to type it, it appears in the IntelliSense list and I can tab to insert it. Then to reference the column, open with a square bracket. This brings up a list of all the column names. Now I can start to type the column name to narrow down the list. There it is. Arrow down select it, how to insert it. Close square brackets, close parentheses, and press enter. Now you can reference the table with its structured references from any sheet in the workbook, making it easy to write formulas and quick to understand what and how they are calculating. We've just covered structured references, a powerful feature of Excel tables, but there's much more to discover. If you found this information valuable, let me know in comment below. Let's get back. In my data table here, if I click on the filter button, you can see I've got data up to November. And on this sheet here called report, I've got some pivot tables and charts that reference that data. You can also see in the pivot table and line chart that the data goes up to November. So, when December comes around, we get some new data. To illustrate this, I've got it here on the sheet. I'll just control plus C to copy it, and then to navigate back to my sales data table, I can use the name box drop down. This not only lists all my defined names, it also includes my table names. To navigate back to the sales data table, simply select it from the list, and there's my table with the data selected. Now all I need to do is go to the very last row, select the first blank row under the table, and Control plus B to paste. As I do, notice the banded row table formatting has been copied down and the gross profit formula has also automatically been copied down. If I Control plus down arrow to go to the end, you can see the very last cell in the table has the resizing handle in the bottom right corner, showing me that this data is now included in my table range. And if we go back to the top, you can see my total sales and total profit figures have automatically included the December's data. I haven't had to update them. Well, what about the report? Let's take a look. In my report, it still only shows November's data. But to update it, all I need to do is go to the Dates tab of the ribbon and click the Refresh All button. Keep an eye on the line chart and the pivot table as I do. And with one click, all my pivot tables and charts now include the December's data. Now you might be familiar with slicers and looking at pivot tables. They're just a really great way to easily filter your data and reports. But many people don't know that you can also use slicers for tables. Let's take a look. With any cell in the table selected, on the Table Design tab, Click Insert Slicer. Select the fields you want the slicer for and click OK. Let's place them up inside one another and I'll just make them a little bit bigger to get rid of those scroll bars. And now with a click of a couple of buttons, I can filter my data to focus on what I'm interested in. As you can see, Slicers are not only easier to use than filter buttons, but they also color the selected buttons to indicate what items are included in the table, which is super handy. Now another built-in feature of tables and total rows, you can turn them on by the Table Design tab, and then Total Row. You can see it's automatically added a total to my Gross Profit column. And if I select it, and we look in the formula bar, you can see it's inside of the subtotal formula. I can add more totals to the other numeric columns, clicking on the drop-down here. I can even choose different aggregation types. We've got average, count, and so on. Let's go with some. And I'll also apply for my sales. Now, if you notice, the total sales here is not the same as the total sales returned by my sum formula. And that's because the subtotal function excludes rows hidden by filters, whereas the sum formula includes all rows. So as I change the filters, my formulas on my total row in my table automatically update. That's a wrap for today. 
Do like, share, and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.